the urine formation by the nephron. Urine formation is a quite a long and complex process that consists of few steps. We start from step one. Step one is filtration. It is also called pressure filtration because when blood enters in the kidney, it is entering through the artery, the renal artery. Renal artery enters inside the kidney and give rise to the arterioles. These arterioles, as we previously seen in the uh, various diagrams, that the arteriole enters uh, inside the uh, renal capsule and makes the glomerulus. Then it goes out to um, cover the uh, nephron except for collecting duct. In the renal corpuscle, pressure filtration occur because there is a network of capillaries inside and there is a corpuscle made by the renal tubules. This is an extension of the renal tubules. Here the process of pressure filtration occur. Why we call it a pressure filtration? Because we know that in arteries the blood is pushed by the heart, by the contraction of the heart, the pumping action of the heart. Blood is coming with the pressure. So in the arteriole and in the capillaries, blood is coming with a pressure and because the glomerular, the glomerular capillaries uh, are in a close contact with the, uh, the renal capsule, the Bowman's capsule, um, the exchange of materials, lot many materials occur between the uh, blood capillaries, the glomerulus and the renal capsule. This makes the initial filtrate which is also called Bowman's filtrate because this capsule uh, on the name of discoverer, the renal capsule is called, the, this capsule is called the Bowman's capsule. We sometimes call it a Bowman's filtrate. This is a very initial filtrate and this filtration occur under high pressure because arteriole is coming giving rise to the capillaries, pressure is high. This filtrate have uh, many ingredients uh, except for proteins and the red blood cells. Proteins, they are large, they cannot come out of the capillaries and uh, the RBCs, they are also large, they do not also come out, but glucose, amino acid, salts and water comes out of the blood vessels and enter inside the Bowman's uh, capsule and makes the Bowman's filtrate. So the pressure filtration is the first step in urine formation. Blood is filtered, we can say that blood is filtered under uh, the high blood pressure, uh, not high blood pressure in those terms that uh, we use normally for a disease, but uh, pressure of blood is high here in the renal capsule. So the things are filtered and enter inside the corpuscle. Let us have a look on the diagram of very, a very close diagram of the renal corpuscle. We can see that there is an efferent arteriole which is entering inside the Bowman's capsule, the glomerulus. And the other one is going out which is called the efferent artery. Glomerulus consists of the capillaries which are um, extensive and which have a higher pressure. And you can see that the, the parietal layer of the glomerular capsule is so close to these, uh, this network of capillaries that due to the pressure in the blood, the uh, pressure in the, um, this network, the blood is filtered and uh, water, urea, glucose and some amino acids goes out of the fluid and enters the renal capsule. We call it a Bowman's filtrate. Now we know that this Bowman's filtrate have some essential important ingredients which are required by the body like glucose and uh, amino acids and uh, various salts and even excessive amounts of water. Body cannot afford losing all of these ingredients. So this initial filtrate is highly filtered again and, and many of these things which are present inside this filtrate, excess water, salts, many salts, not all, glucose, amino acids, these are reabsorbed by the renal tubule, different parts of the renal tubule. This process is called reabsorption. Reabsorption is highly important and uh, uh, this is actually the major important function of the uh, renal tubule. Now as we know um, that renal tubule is um, highly convoluted and this urine have to pass from all of these uh, uh, convoluted uh, parts of this tubule 
and this tubule, second fact is this that this tubule is surrounded by a network of capillaries. So, it is richly supplied with blood vessels except for the collecting duct. So, this is easy, the reabsorption in this way um, is easy in this uh, functional unit of kidney. This occur through this network of capillaries surrounding these tubules. We also can call it a selective reabsorption because of course all of the ingredients are not reabsorbed. Water because due to uh, high pressure in the um, arterioles is um, filtered in excessive quantity. So, water is reabsorbed but not all, not much water remains as urine, part of urine. Uh, many salts are reabsorbed because um, salts are also again just like the water um, removed in excessive quantities or we can say filtered in excessive quantities due to higher pressure. So, many salts are also reabsorbed for example, uh, the sodium, uh, sodium chloride, sodium and I, uh, chloride ions, these are reabsorbed. Glucose is essentially reabsorbed because glucose is a, uh, a required molecule by the body, it is reabsorbed. Only um, we know that only the diabetic patients, uh, they have glucose in their urine and um, the situation is called a hyperglycemia. Uh, but this is, this is in the case of uh, a disease condition when glucose is present in the body in excessive amount and due to the patient have diabetes, it is not utilized by the body. So, this is uh, released in the urine and uh, due to this, um, this situation is called hyperglycemia. And diabetes was a disease which was, was um, um, indicated uh, as a uh, sweet urine and people have sweet urine disease. Um, anyway. Then um, amino acids are essentially reabsorbed because we know that amino acids are um, used as parts of proteins. They have to make proteins. So, amino acids are essential ingredients. These are uh, reabsorbed by the renal tubule. Let us have a look on an animation which shows you the process of reabsorption from the filtrate. See this animation shows that true glomerulus filtrate which is actually the Bowman's filtrate which have a um, quite a high concentration of sodium, amino acids and glucose which are all required the body, they are present in the filtrate. Um, and when they go down the these convoluted tubules, these are absorbed by the nearby uh, capillary present because capillary is close in the closer vicinity and due to difference in the concentration gradients, uh, these uh, sodium, amino acids and glucose, they are reabsorbed from this filtrate and go back to the blood. So, they are returned to the blood. So, from very first part of the um, convoluted tubule, the renal tubule, these um, important ingredients or these important materials, molecules go back to the blood. Now, have a look on the next diagram. This diagram shows a small part of our collecting duct, which shows that the lumen of collecting duct and the epithelial cells of these collecting duct which are in close vicinity with the medulla and the exchange of different um, ions and materials occur. Actually in medulla and cortex of the kidney, um, these are the tissues and they have different concentrations of various ions and salts. Because these collecting ducts, they are uh, close to the those tissues which have, a dif which have different concentrations or we can say have different concentration gradients in relation with the collecting duct and uh, the convoluted and other ducts. The exchange of different salts, water and other materials takes place. Let us have a look on the next diagram which shows that different parts of the nephron, proximal tubule for example, there is a reabsorption of sodium chloride, there is a reabsorption of water, uh, there is a reabsorption of various nutrients, potassium ions, but you can see that from cortex ammonia and hydrogen ions are going towards or they are actually entering inside this proximal tubule. This process actually occur against the concentration gradient and it occurs by diffusion. Then you can see down there in the medullary region in the loop of Henle that water is going out. Water and sodium chloride are removed and they go back to the medulla and um, they are absorbed nearby vessels, the blood vessels and go back, return back to the blood. If we go up and look at the distal tubule, then uh, there is even more removal of a reabsorption of sodium chloride, water, bicarbonate ions and some of the potassium and hydrogen are also added to the these tubules, the renal tubule. 
the entrance of this potassium and hydrogen ions in the renal tubule from the surrounding the tissue is called is termed as sometimes secretion. It says that hydrogen ion and potassium ions are secreted from the tissue of the kidney inside the renal tubule and when they enter inside they are actually included or be and become part of the urine. We can see at the end in the collecting duct even there is again some uh, reabsorption of some more sodium chloride but at the end it, it makes the final uh, volume of the urine which have urea, water and some salts. This last part the collecting duct as we know previously that it enters this collecting duct we can say at the end it is extended. This extended part uh, reaches at the end of the medulla and enters inside the pelvis, the renal pelvis. Now all of the uh, nephrons they are doing the same process at the same time. They are filtering lot much of blood at the same time and through whole of this process they are all forming some part of urine. And then this urine is entered inside the renal pelvis. Through renal pelvis uh, urine produced by all of these uh, renal tubules, uh, all of these nephrons is uh, uh, through, re through renal pelvis it goes down towards the ureters and then this is stored inside the urinary bladder. So all of the, this is the process of urine formation. So through this process all of the nephrons, the functional units are producing urine all the times and uh, releasing that urine into the renal pelvis and then storing this through the ureters into the urinary bladder and uh, um, uh, when urinary bladder is filled then um, the, the, a reflux is um, the a reflux arises um, due to which this is uh, released through the external opening um, called the urethra. Uh, the urinary uh, bladder when it is filled it gives rise to a reflux. This reflux is um, uh, actually there are two, two controls upon this urinary bladder uh, and the, its path towards urethra. One is involuntary that is when it is filled it is activated and gives a reflux but the other part is muscular. Um, as we know that the urination is not controlled in the infants. This is an instinct which is learned. Later on in life um, a, a human being, a, a child even, a, quite a, a toddler can learn to, uh, uh, to consciously control the urination. But in infants this is not um, yet learned, so in infants uh, this is not under the conscious control.